In today's video, we are going to be checking out six more tools that you can use to really level up your Webflow project. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Connor, and on this channel I help people who cannot code build their own online businesses with no code tools like Webflow, Airtable and Zapier. Now, a few months ago, I made a video on this channel called 11 tools to power up your Webflow projects. And today I am making the first follow-up video, which will introduce you to six new tools that you can use to really take your Webflow projects to the next level. So just like in the previous video, the tools that I'm gonna be showcasing today were designed specifically for Webflow, meaning that you don't need to use any third-party automation tools like Zapier or Integromat to use these tools. And they are just really, really useful and solve very specific problems that you currently can't do with Webflow natively. All right, before all that out of the way, there's just one last thing to do. If you are new to this channel, please do me a quick little favor, smash that subscribe button. Also, while you are down there, also hit that like button. It helps out quite a lot. But with all of that being said, let's dive into the first tool. Okay, so the first tool is Pastel, and Pastel is a tool that you can use to quickly collect feedback from your clients or your teammates when you are working on different websites. Now, when I made the first video talking about different tools that you can use in Webflow, I also asked some people on Twitter what tools I had missed, and the one that I had clearly missed was Pastel, and Pastel is predominantly used by agencies, but also by freelancers who want to collect client input and feedback really fast and Pastel is just a really great tool for that. So Pastel has a real cool demo on their website where you can just go ahead and type in the URL of the website. And what Pastel does is it basically brings up an instance of your live website and then what you can do is you can then get your teammates or your clients to click on different elements on the website and leave feedback on it. So for example, if I want my web developer to change this picture, I can just click on it and then leave a comment. So I can write something like leave or change this image. And this is obviously a huge time saver because when I have worked with clients in the past on Webflow sites, there's usually quite a bit of back and forth when it comes to emails, slacks, and all those types of things. So being able to give this particular tool to either your clients or your teammates will save you a lot of time. So if you are wanting to check out what kind of comments someone left on your website, you can just click on the comments tab in the bottom left and you'll be able to see who left what comment on what section and so if I click on this one here, I can see that someone left a comment asking me to change the text. And you can also see if someone left comments specific to the mobile view by just clicking onto the toggle with the mobile view. And it's all pretty simple and straightforward to use. So pricing wise, I'll probably say it's quite standard for some of these tools that you can use with Webflow. So if you're a freelancer, it's $19 a month, you can have as many unlimited guests reviewing your website as possible. If you're running a studio and you need multiple team members on there, then it obviously gets a little bit more expensive. Um, and then there are also enterprise options. So in case you are running a very big business, then that option is there for you as well. So the overall consensus is that Pastel is a really cool tool. It's been recommended by a lot of people who are know are very 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 good and deep in the webflow world so if you are running a team if you are a freelancer and you just want to take that client experience to the next level then I think using Pastel will really help you do that now on to tool number two okay so tool number two is the fin suite chrome extension that basically allows you to do a whole bunch of little niggly things that you can otherwise not do inside of webflow with their chrome extension now honestly I'm not going to do this justice by showing you how it all works. You actually just have to install the Chrome extension and try it out yourself. It allows you to do a whole bunch of things that have been sitting on the Webflow wishlist for a long, long time. And they are rolling out a whole bunch of small little features that will allow you to do even more over time. But you're here watching this video, so I may as well show you how it all works. So. At the moment, like I said, FinSuite is rolling out a whole bunch of smaller little features that will basically allow you to solve certain types of problems that currently exist inside of the designer. One of them is obviously breakpoints. So in the past, whenever you added new breakpoints, um, 
what would happen is there was actually no way for you to remove these breakpoints and this is something that can be quite annoying because say you start designing on the highest breakpoint um, it can obviously affect all of the elements below that and because you can accidentally select one of the canvases above the main breakpoint it can oftentimes lead to you kind of screwing up your website a bit and it was always kind of a little bit of an inconvenience. Now, what you can do with the FinSuite extension is jump in here, click on breakpoints, and then just hit the delete button. And just like that, the Webflow designer will reload and just like that, the breakpoints have disappeared. So this is you know, a small but very meaningful feature that will really solve a lot of inconveniences for people working inside of Webflow. Now, that is obviously just one thing. Another thing that has already been published uh, is the ability to remove classes. One thing that I really like is the color swatches reorder. So I've already reordered them so it doesn't look as messy. But before the color swatches were reordered, it were quite messy inside of my Webflow color palette. So that would kind of be a little bit all over the place. And to be honest, these types of things can happen because you kind of add colors to your swatches over time. But what the FinSuite extension allows you to do is to actually organize them in a way that makes sense. So you can just jump in here and you can drag them in the order that kind of fits. So if you are using multiple shades of a color, you can order them nice and neatly next to each other and then it will just be a lot easier for you to select the right ones. Now they have the same thing for symbols, interactions and CSS styles. Again. The one thing that I really like about what they have done here is that these are small little inconveniences that have been happening inside of the Webflow Designer and they have basically just created this Chrome extension and addressed those specific issues. Now there are a whole bunch of other things that are still to come, for example the Unbind CMS which I personally think is one of the most frustrating things when you are rebuilding sites inside of Webflow. And basically what that will allow you to do is to automatically unbind all CMS items that are added to say a template page or a collection page and then you also have things like sitemap generators and a whole bunch of additional things that will just make the overall experience of using Webflow a lot better. Then one other last thing that I want to add is the bulk redirects. So in the past if you wanted to set up a 301 redirect then what you would do is you would manually put in the old URL or path of your particular page and then link it to that specific redirect path that you had just set up. Now this is okay if you're doing one URL at the time but as soon as it like adds up or you do an entire site rebuild it can become really really time consuming and so what the Chrome extension now allows you to do is to actually use a bulk import to import a whole bunch of redirects at once. So all you need to do is just drag in your CSV file that has all of your old paths and all of your new paths and just like that you'll be good to go. So the Chrome extension is free to use so if you haven't already installed it jump on over to their website I'll leave a link in the description down below and get it all set up it will honestly really make using Webflow a lot easier and I also want to make a quick shout out to the developer who managed to actually get the extension into the Webflow Designer natively to make the overall experience of using it a lot better. Okay with that being said just double checking that you hit that like button but let's move on to tool number three. So the next tool is the flow based component library and I'm going to keep this one nice and short because I have actually made a very detailed demo on this channel so I'll link to it you should check it out if you want to learn more about it but in a nutshell what it allows you to do is to get their pre-made components so sections and headers and whatever you want and you can just copy and paste it directly from the component library into your Webflow project. So let's say for example I want to add a um, section where people can sign up to my newsletter. Now they've got this component here that looks very neat and then all I need to do is click into it, click on copy component, jump on over into my website and then just paste the element in. So I'm going to paste it in and move it up just a little bit. I'll move it up here. And so now when I go to this particular section I can see that it just automatically copy and pasted over from Flowbase into my Webflow project. Huge time saver, that no need to download templates and to copy and paste them between different Webflow projects. 
I have used this thing a lot and let me tell you it's awesome. So the Float Base Component Library Club is $39 a month and if you are someone who's planning on getting a template anyway then I would definitely consider this an option. You get a lot of flexibility with it instead of having to use all of the components that sit inside of some of the templates that you can download you can actually just pick and choose the elements that you want to use on your site and I have just found that just from a cost perspective it's really reasonable but it has also just saved me so much time that has made the $39 a month well worth it. Okay straight on to tool number four and friends this tool has the potential to be an absolute game changer for anyone wanting to build apps inside of Webflow. Now there was talk on the street that an app has been created that basically gives you some of the back-end functionality of something like Bubble. Now whenever I hear that I'm always a little bit skeptical because I kind of feel like this is a very very hard problem to solve but then when I came across this website called Wizz, I actually just went through their demos, I went through some of the use cases that they're solving and let me tell you this tool really does have the potential to allow you to build apps inside of Webflow. Now just to get some of the basic features out of the way you can do things like logins, authentication, you can also connect it to certain APIs so if you want to make a weather website you can connect it to the weather.com API and another thing that is very exciting is that you can actually use Airtable as your database and you can build some quite cool queries out of it so if you want to display things like lists inside of a dashboard you can actually filter it out by user and all of that information is pulled directly from Airtable. Of course another thing that works is billing it integrates directly with Stripe and I basically went through what they suggest doing for example a course on how to build a client dashboard and even though I was a little bit skeptical in the beginning after seeing the demo I really must say that this thing is quite a bit more advanced than I thought it was. So honestly I recommend just checking out the videos that they have posted on their website. They take you through the entire process of setting up a client dashboard and a task management tool and and it's very simple and straightforward to understand. So I personally haven't used this tool on any of my projects before but from what I can tell it is a viable alternative to using the Zapier and Airtable stack and yes it might potentially also replace something like member stack and Outsetter. From a pricing perspective I mean it is reasonable always keep in mind these prices are in euros so if you are in say um, USD you just need to do the conversions for it but I think considering the functionality that you do get it's actually just incredibly well priced. So where I am at the moment with the Unicorn Factory and all my other projects I am still going to be sticking to the Airtable Webflow Zapier member stack stack for a while just because I've got everything set up in it but in the future I'm definitely going to have a play around with this because one of the big things that the bubble friends of ours criticize about Webflow is just the lack of logic and backing that you have but just from what I've seen from Wiz, this could be that tool that basically gives Webflow that functionality. So definitely, definitely exciting times. I honestly feel just over the last few weeks seeing what some of the people have started working on just really, really makes me excited about some of the types of things that you'll be able to build with Webflow in the future. And to see people in the community stepping up like this is absolutely fantastic. But without getting too sentimental, let's move on to tool number five. So tool number five hasn't actually launched yet, but it is a new feature that is coming to Jetboost. And as long as I make these videos, I am always going to mention something that Chris Spags has been working on because he always makes us building things inside of Webflow and specifically with the CMS a lot better. So I have made a lot of videos about Jetboost on this video but one of the more recent features that he's been working on that is going to be released very very soon is the ability to sort your collection list by a whole bunch of different factors for example when it was published, how popular it is or also just by name. 
So again, I think a lot of people who might just be getting into Webflow might consider this like something that should already exist natively, but it doesn't. And Jetboost really solves a lot of these things for us inside of the CMS. And it's gonna be out in a few weeks. And because I might not be making another one of these videos, I just wanted to mention it in advance. So if you do want to use this for your blog, for your marketplace, whatever it is, just jump on over to his website, sign up to the early access, and really take your CMS to the next level. So the sixth and final tool of this video is Lottie Files and while I'm on the Jetboost website I might as well just show you what it all does in action. So all you need to do is click the test again button inside of Jetboost and what will happen is this nice little animation will pop up and basically make the entire user experience a lot more fun. Now, you might wonder, where do you find these nice little animations that you can embed into your Webflow site? And the answer to that question is Lottie Files. So Lottie Files is a library of animations that you can basically download as either a Lottie file, a GIF, or whatever else, and embed into your websites. Now, I see a lot of websites that actually just use Lottie files for things like close buttons, but there are so many different things that you can use it from, even just looking at that example that I showed you inside of Jetboost. So if you just really wanna liven up your website, make it a bit more fun, just jump on over into here, select whatever file you want to embed into your site, and inside of each file, you actually get specific instructions on how to set it up inside of Webflow. So this will actually link you directly to a Webflow University page where they take you through the entire process of setting up a Lottie animation inside of Webflow. Again, if you've used Webflow University before, you'll know the kind of caliber of tutorials that you'll get. So it's definitely a neat thing to do, a neat thing to have on your website. So again, just jump on over to Lottie files, browse through their library and pick whatever one works best for you. And that is it friends, that is the latest edition of tools that you can use with Webflow. Again, if you haven't watched that first video, definitely check that out. I've got a few tools in there that are definitely worth reviewing and they'll definitely allow you to do a lot of cool things inside of Webflow. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a quick little favor, leave a like on this video, tell your friends and family about it. Other than that, thank you so much for sticking around for the entire video and I'll see you back here for the next one.